Last October, Poppy Playtime came onto the indie horror scene and took YouTube by storm. Felt like everybody was playing it, theorizing about it, high-fiving it. High five, Huggy. Boom! High five. High five, buddy! High five, buddy! High five? Let's go, let's go. High five, I missed. So of course, when the trailer for chapter two dropped a couple weeks ago, you blew up my Twitter asking for a theory. So for the last month, I've been digging through the trailer, the merch drops, the secret leaked closed circuit television footage, all to come up with the answers. And regardless of whether I'm right or wrong about Poppy Playtime chapter two, one thing we know for sure, we're gonna be dealing with some serious big lady energy. Oh, you big. Oh, you big lady. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show that may not be able to give you a grab pack, but'll still let you high-five that subscribe button. And welcome back, friends, to Poppy Playtime, the one game to finally understand how terrifying old toys really are. Didn't really need a creepy indie horror game to tell me that all those American Girl dolls secretly come to life at night. Kirsten's unblinking eyes just pierce into my soul. Duh, it's too realistic. Hard pass! Last time we explored the old abandoned toy factory of Playtime Co., we walked away with two major predictions about where this franchise is headed. First, we concluded that some of the former employees were experimented on in order to create living toys. And not just experimented on, but that their flesh and organs were actively used as the materials to create parts of the toys. Some were willing participants in this, namely Stella Graber, who I believe is now the creepy living doll Poppy Playtime. Others were less enthusiastic about the process. And as a result, the ensuing toy was just a wee bit less friendly. My second major prediction was that our game's title character, Poppy Playtime, wasn't actually the villain of the story. Unlike every other horror game in existence, where the title character is always out to rip the flesh from your bones. Instead, here in Poppy Playtime, Stella's human desire to make children happy and live forever meant that, now reborn as a toy, she just wanted to escape the factory to fulfill those dreams. Because of this, I guess that she would serve as our guide throughout the facility as we tried to solve the mystery of the factory's missing employees. And hey, if you listen to the chapter 2 trailer, it seems like we weren't that far off. Terrible things have happened. Where do I even begin? You're in grave danger. She's watching your every move, so you better be careful. Mommy doesn't like guests. That's Poppy's voice, definitely warning us of what's ahead. So I'm gonna personally consider this one a win. Look, I, I just gotta take what wins I can, okay? They're, they're few and far between. So now that we've proven ourselves to be very clearly dialed into the storyline for Poppy Playtime, what do we think's coming down the pipeline for chapter two? Let's just say that Mommy Longlegs here is gonna be looking much different by the end of this chapter. But to understand how, we're gonna have to look a bit closer. Since she was the big reveal of the trailer, I think it's fair to start there. First and most importantly, yes, her name is a officially Mommy Longlegs. I'm not even making that up to ride whatever weird trend gaming's having right now with large, deadly women. This official name was actually revealed in, and I, I, I can't believe I'm gonna have to say this, but it was revealed in the NFTs that this game released. <sighs> Feel dirty just saying it. Here's the thing, Mob Games, creators of Poppy Playtime, yeah, they made these things and they hid lore behind them, which is totally not cool. The only reason I'm comfortable talking about these things is because the fan backlash was so strong against it, and they sold so poorly. Seriously, they made like 30,000 of these things, and they only sold like 600. That mob games learned their lesson, and they've gone on record saying that they are not going to do NFTs again, so I, we're watching you. I'm gonna hold you to that. Anyway, in a completely awesome move, the channel Terrico bought one of each so that no one else had to, and shared them all on his channel so everyone could see what they were missing. And it did give us important lore information. On the front of each card was a Playtime Company toy, and on the back was a corresponding date which allows us to form a complete timeline of the toy's releases by Playtime Co. Poppy Playtime was the first, released in 1950. Bron the Dinosaur was next in 1961, followed by Candy Cat in 1979. Huggy Wuggy and Kissy Missy were respective in 1984 and 1985, and finally Boogie Bot was the most recent in 1993. This timeline actually reinforces our previous theory, probably the only thing to ever come out of NFTs, where we guessed that Poppy was the first major hit for Playtime Co. because of how eager Stella was to be turned into a toy, but that at some point the company lost the secret to her creation, which is why every toy that follows her becomes a monster. In addition to forming a timeline though, the NFTs also ended with voice lines reading out letters. <laughs> See, with the last of the batch giving us a code that we'd need to solve. Y-M-N-L-I-O-S-O-N. 
N L O M G E N F C G Y G S. Assembling all the letters and unscrambling them, you get the phrase, Mommy Long Legs is coming. Yeah, definitely not a puzzle worth the $90 it takes to assemble all the NFTs. Again, huge shout out to Terrico as well as all the other creators who I saw do something similar with these NFTs and made them available to the public. Okay, so Mommy Long Legs is clearly our next big bad. A giant spider with stretchy legs, but what exactly is their plan? Well, let's think back to chapter one. In chapter one, we learned that there's been a series of experiments to create these monsters. Coordination and cooperation is evidently within his skill set, as well as the skill set of all other experiments of his type. Huggy Wuggy was the last, Experiment 1006, but he was also different. As we saw in the game's first trailer in a split-second lore reveal, Huggy didn't need to eat in order to survive. Quote from the trailer, Despite his digestive tract being wired properly, the prototype finds no necessity for sustenance, unlike the others. All other experiments can only survive while subsisting on much larger portions. And in this new chapter, it looks like we're gonna see these previous five versions of Huggy. Here, we see ourselves having to play whack-a-mole against three differently colored Huggies trying to crawl out of the pipes. Seeing how many empty pipes are here? Wouldn't surprise me to see two more variations crawling out. And, just like we heard about in the tapes, these guys? Probably hungry considering that all the employees of the factory went missing ten years ago. That is a long time to be waiting for a full meal. Mommy Longlegs is also gonna want some food. When she sees us in the trailer, she says, A new Notice the slight head twitch, the change in her voice as she tells us it's been so long? <laughs> yeah. She seems unhinged and hungry. She's just hoping that we are, quite literally, a fly in a web, just like the chapter's title says. But if these creatures need food, and lots of it, in order to survive, then how are they all going after a decade without any visitors? Well, for that answer, we actually turn to leaked closed-circuit TV footage that was revealed as part of a past Poppy Playtime merch drop. Cause let's face it, once you've had yourself a wildly successful 30-minute game play demo for your horror concepts. It's not about winning over the audience's trust by getting a fully fleshed out mechanically sound chapter 2 out right away. It's about franchising opportunities. Fam, NFTs, merch, plushies. Man, I'm just impressed that they showed enough restraint to work on the actual game long enough before the publication of their first novel trilogy. Anyway, when this merch website went live, it came with three different CCTV camera feeds from inside the factory. We can tell that this is a live feed because camera 01's in the main auditorium where we first see Huggy. But Huggy is noticeably missing. So these feeds are clearly leaking after he tried to maul us to death in the vent system. In the beginning, these camera feeds were just kind of there. Nothing all that exciting. But after 10 days, things started to happen. On camera 01, a broken and bloody cat bee toy appeared in the middle of the room. The blood isn't super surprising given the whole people are toys thing that we already talked about. Bloody toys were strewn across the factory in chapter 1. The interesting part is actually what happens next. Another three days go by and suddenly the cat bee toy is missing with a trail of blood leading out into the darkness. Around the same time, we see this image of a spaghetti hand coming out of the machinery. These details, plus the fact that we see Mommy Longlegs drag a Huggy Wuggy doll into the darkness at the start of the Chapter 2 trailer, tells me that the larger monsters are feeding off of the other toys. Remember, some, or maybe even all, of the toys are made from people. That's why they leave behind pools of blood when they're injured. As such, they can all serve as healthy snacks to keep Mama alive. In fact, we actually see pieces of brawn and Boogie Bot hanging from the webs around the factory much like flies trapped in a web about to be eaten by the spider. We also see this caterpillar enemy chasing us through a jungle gym setup. Wouldn't be surprised if Mommy winds up devouring that thing too, like a spider eating an insect. All of that just tiding her over until she can finally get herself a proper meal, us. But for all the spider imagery, there's one weird detail. Mommy Longlegs only has four legs. I mean, even my favorite Pizzaplex spider, Music Man, he had six. But I think that her four legs act as a clue for what's gonna happen to her throughout the chapter. Mommy Longlegs was clearly inspired by the real-world toy of Betty Spaghetti, a toy that was huge during the late 90s and early 2000s. She too had rubber limbs and hair that you could manipulate, but the key part was that she was customizable. And I don't mean that you could just style her hair. Her body parts and hair were actually removable and swappable. For instance, her ponytail could be swapped out for slinkies or yarn. And of course, you could accessorize to your heart's content. If Mommy is taking these broken toys and eating their organic insides, maybe she's also 
also collecting the fabric and plastic bodies to create more limbs that'll make her stronger. Add to her arm count. In fact, in the trailer, there's a small detail that I bet most people overlooked. There are these small little dots on Mommy Longlegs' arms and neck as she crawls towards us. It's not a rendering or modeling issue. That is just like the dots that we see on the Betty Spaghetti dolls. Dots that help with the toy's customization. In short, if you think that Mommy is threatening now, just wait until she puts on the rest of her arms and starts filling out those holes with equipable accessories, like a boogie bot head that's ready to cave your skull in. Other things to point out here from the trailer, obviously the caterpillar, like I mentioned. There also seems to be a flower enemy hidden up in the ceiling. The huggy we see Mommy grab at the beginning of the trailer isn't the huggy that chased us from chapter one. You'll notice there's no blood on the floor and it's small size relative to the size of the floor tiles, so this thing is likely a random huggy doll that's used for effect. But before we wrap things up here, there's still one more topic that I wanted to focus on today, and it's the character that we actually started this whole theory off with, Poppy. While the internet's been distracted with Mommy Longlegs, Poppy is still here, and she's talking to us throughout the entire trailer. And what she's saying, or more importantly, what she's not saying, may actually be pointing us to the main plot of not only this chapter, but the entire game. As I pointed out earlier, Poppy seems to be guiding us throughout the game, but just because she's helping us doesn't mean she's actually the good guy. Take a listen to these two lines from the trailer. You are perfect. Too perfect to lose. Poppy saying we're too perfect to lose lines up with what we theorized about last time, that she's the one talking to us throughout the death screens. It's not your time to die. Don't die just yet. It's too early to die. All these screens show us that Poppy wants us alive, but her reason for that seems unclear. Sure, throughout chapter one, we got notes and death screens that seem to be focused on us saving the missing employees. There's more lives at risk than just yours and all that. But in this new trailer, there's something uneasy about Poppy's tone. Something obsessive. It's like she's planning something that we aren't aware of. We theorized last time that all Poppy wanted was to be free out in the real world to bring joy to children. But what if we were only half right? Just because she wants to bring joy to children doesn't technically mean that she has to leave the factory. What if Poppy is trying to bring the factory back to life? At the very beginning of the game, we get a note telling us to come to the factory and find a Poppy flower. But after finding the flower, all the literal writing on the wall tells us to not go in. Why would we get a letter from the employees telling us to find the flower only for them to then tell us to stay away once we actually get there? It doesn't make sense. It only makes sense if that first letter is from Poppy. Notice those spelling and grammar mistakes? That letter is from her. It was sent to us to lure us in. She wants us in this factory. She needs us in this factory. Listen again to our lines from the trailer. You are perfect. Too perfect to lose. She describes us as perfect. In the death screens of chapter one, she calls Huggy wonderful. He's good, but he's not perfect. Poppy must therefore be aware that both Huggy Wuggy and Mommy Longlegs are the failed attempts to recreate the magic of her own birth. But someone who came back to the factory despite the horror stories? Someone who came back with a good heart that wanted to help those who were trapped? That is suddenly someone that she can work with. As far as we know, Poppy's the only experiment to truly work. The only toy that managed to not turn into a monster through the toy conversion process. And if she truly wants to spread joy to all the children of the world, it would make sense for her to want to restart those experiments, to turn the factory back on, to create more living toys like herself. But it all needs to start with one pure soul. It needs to start with us. That's why she doesn't want to lose us. Not just because we can free her and remove the obstacles standing in her way, but because in her eyes, we can become the new patient zero. We can be the Ken to her Barbie. My guess is that after surviving chapter after chapter of toy-related horror headed our way, in the end, Poppy is gonna turn on us. She's gonna betray us. She's gonna turn us into the next generation of toy. By winning the game, we ultimately lose. But hey, while Mob Games wants you to invest in NFTs to unlock the lore of this game, with our sponsor today, Public, you could invest in stocks that'll give you some real value. Public is an app built to help you invest in the right things at the right time. I'm gonna be honest with you, investing was always really scary to me. I was raised by parents who taught me that you invested your money into your mattress. Literally, you hide it there. But what I've learned over the years is that you actually have to have your money working for you by investing in smart ways for the long term. Not anything super risky or speculative, but stuff that helps your money grow steadily over time. And Public helps make that learning process easier by updating you about stock performance and exposing you to a community of smart investors who can share their knowledge with you. Public isn't trying to turn you into a day trader or some risky stock market gambler. They're invested in your education. In fact, their app is free to use and there's no commission on any standard stock 
train. And the best part is, you get a free stock worth anywhere between $3 and $300 when you go to public.com slash matpat, M-A-T-P-A-T, or just head on down to the link in the description and create your account. Still feeling a bit unsure? Absolutely get it. Trust me, I am also nervous about this sort of stuff, but that's why you can actually follow me on the app, at matpatgt. That way you can see what trends I follow and we can take this little adventure together. And here's the thing, friends. I'm not going to be making a whole lot of trades. I just don't. I'm a long-term investor. I'm no Amaranth dumping a million dollars into Google or whatever she does. I find a couple of safe stocks and I let them sit, let them grow. That's how it works for me. But hey, if you don't like my investment decisions, there are loads of other YouTubers on the app who you can follow for inspiration as well. So once again, make sure you go to public.com slash matpat or click the link down in the description to get yourself a free stock that could be worth anywhere between $3 and $300, but more importantly, is going to start educating you about something that is very important for your long-term investment portfolio. That's it. It's just one way of smartly diversifying your assets. Is it the whole thing? Should you dump all of your life savings into the stock market? Absolutely not. Do not do that sort of stuff. This is an investment advice, but it's kind of general knowledge advice. Don't do that sort of stuff. Like I said, for me, it's all about education. This stuff is important for you and me to know, and we're on this learning journey together. And in the meantime, friends, remember, it's all just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching.